Okay, so it's 10 past five. I suggest we start. As the, in the first keynote they said during Germany, we like to be sharp. So my name is Daniel. I, I work at the CERN Cloud team, and I'm together also on behalf of Arne, my colleague, together with whom we look after the ironic service at CERN. And today, I'm going to tell you a story that we've decided to name the most excellent and lamentable tragedy of ironic and Nova. It's just, uh, it might remind you of uh, William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. And it's just a funny way to tell you our adventures as operators of ironic. And that sometimes, due to our custom deployment, we suffer from weird issues that shouldn't be expected at all, but they cause us sometimes fun, sometimes headaches. So we would just want to share them with you. So I hope you enjoy. Uh, so probably you already know about this because we are in almost all summits. And, but I just want to give a brief overview to those of you who don't know. So CERN is the European uh, Laboratory for Particle Physics. And we are located in Geneva in Switzerland. And what we do is, among other things, so our main mission is fundamental research in the field of particle physics. This is the LHC, which is an accelerator that accelerates particles to very close to the speed of light. And we made, we made so to make, them, to make these particles collide in four big experiments. Uh, this is the Atlas Cavern. This is located 100 meters underground. And it's an eight or nine story building. So it's the size of, a, of an eight or nine story building, but 100 meters underground. And in these places, we have these huge detectors. So just for you to notice, this is a, a person down there. This is 100 meters underground. You can see the, in the middle, this is where the, beam, where the two beams go, and they collide in the, in the center. And basically, what we just do here is with super uh, state-of-the-art electronic detectors. We try to get the data that is coming out, and we try to analyze it uh, afterwards and see which particles are coming out. So our main idea is to reproduce the, the first instance, instance of the Big Bang, and we do it by getting these particles to a huge amount of energy. Um, after, so we collect all this data in these experiments. Then all this data come to, comes to our data center. So we have links that come from all the experiments to our data center. And here is where we happily run our OpenStack cloud. As you can see, all our mascots that we love them so much, they run all freely across the data center, uh, orchestrating the machines and doing some messes around there. Uh, we have two data centers, one in Geneva in Switzerland and one in Hungary. We have three dedicated links. And you know, there is where we run our OpenStack cloud. To give you a brief uh, overview of the cloud, this is a recent snapshot. So here you can see more or less what we are doing. We have around 300,000 cores. After the L1TF vulnerability that we saw uh, earlier this year, now we, we, do, we do not have as many cores used as available because we needed to disable SMT in some of our hypervisors. Uh, things that are growing in our cloud, um, we see a huge increase of Magnum clusters, so many Kubernetes clusters. So users are getting into this trend. And actually, our users reflect what, uh, where the market is going somehow. So they are using it. So we offer them Magnum as a way to provision them super easy in our infrastructure. And I'm mainly here to talk to you about Ironic, because I'm looking after that service. So we are also seeing a huge increase in bare metal nodes, and that's due to the policy within CERN that everything, every hardware coming into the data center should go through Ironic. So whether it's for an end user or for us, as uh, having them as hypervisors, everything comes now to us enrolled in Ironic. And this is also making our numbers grow, which is pretty cool. Uh, yes, so now focusing in Ironic, this is our main Ironic dashboard. So what we see or what we control in our daily life. Uh, we are almost there in the 1,500 nodes uh, enrolled and managed with Ironic. We are one shit. I could have worked on that to have 1,500 for the presentation. So the main things we take a look here are if there are any log messages. So if we scroll down here, we would see some error messages so that we can spot quickly what's going on in the cloud. And also, we like to see at the unusual provision states. So we either like our bare metal nodes to be either available or active. So active means our, a user is running an instance. Available means someone could potentially run an instance. Unfortunately, we have some nodes which end up in cleaning failed states and, or where they are doing some things. 
and we got a recent delivery that caused 100 nodes to go into inspect fail. This is something we, some issue we have, and we understand it. We just need to, to work on it, probably after the summit. So this is our dashboard. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions afterwards, or if you want to share some of your best practices, like I guess we are all here to learn from each other, so that would be pretty cool. Uh, okay, so as I told you at the beginning, I'm going to tell you a story. And so for this presentation, I, I read the book from William Shakespeare. I, I have to recommend it to you. It's a nice book, even if it was written like 500 years ago. Uh, and I might want to share with you some of, the, of my favorite uh, quotes. So this is uh, Romeo. When he realizes that he is in love with Juliet, he says to himself as in a monologue, love is heavy and light, bright and dark, hot and cold, sick and healthy, asleep and awake. It's everything except what it, what it is. And I don't know, this inspires me. And it's a bit of a reflection of what sometimes, even if things should work some, some way, then in the reality they might not be like that. It's neither good nor bad, it's just our experience. So, as I told you, the CERN policy now is that for all hardware that comes to the data center, it goes through Ironic. So we might use some of this hardware as a hypervisor. So we are the, the main users. And then we expose this from, through Nova to our end users to run their VMs. We also offer their meta provisioning to our users. So there are some use cases like databases or um, uh, storage servers that need to have the full capabilities of bare metal instances. So everything goes through Ironic. What the user doesn't see is the actual Ironic API, right? So for the end user, when interacting with OpenStack, they are very aware of what OpenStack is. So it's something we offer at CERN to our users, to our physicists, and also to people from IT, so ourselves. So they never interact with Ironic. So uh, this is something like we, as working with Ironic, do not, are not exposed to the world because every request comes from Nova. And this is a bit how we feel because we don't get the visibility. But in the end, of course, the users know that the physical instances are provided with Ironic. Uh, so this is, yeah. Uh, OK, I need to talk to you a bit about, about our setup because most of the issues that we have been seeing are due to our setup. And our setup is caused uh, by years of uh, implementing OpenStack and things that you have to do along the way that maybe are not the best ideal solution, but is the only way. So you, you know there are some trade-offs. So currently, we have around 70 cells. And Belmiro was speaking yesterday about a bit more about how we use cells v2 in our cloud. So we have 70 cells, which are basically the cell conductor and all the hypervisors. On top of there, we have like the Nova. Uh, magic that does everything so whenever an instance uh, gets uh, so whenever a user wants to create an instance uh, something happens there and there is a lot of conversation to in the end uh, select a compute node this is another cell which for nova is another cell but for us is our main cell because it's the bare metal cell so we've been going through different setups and this is our current setup, so this is what we have today. We have one compute node, which handles all requests for all our 1,500, uh, call it compute nodes, hypervisors, bare metal nodes. That's a funny story as well. So when talking within Nova and Ironic, for, for me, uh, I, I, I deal with bare metal nodes, so that's for me a bare metal node. But when debugging issues with the Nova experts, uh, from our team, they sometimes come to us and say, wait, but why do you have uh, 1,500 computes? You told me you had one. So these are common issues that we find, and this is only the talking, but this happens to us, right? So we, sometimes we, we are lost in translation into how Nova and Ironic consider the resources. So, but this is, uh, so this is our bare metal cell. The way we have or we implement cells is because we want to separate projects. Uh, so we have this thing called project mapping. So in each project, we have settings that assign uh, the project to a cell. So whenever an instance uh, is requested from some project, uh, this project has some target cells that might end up hosting that, uh, that instance. In the case of Ironic, we have bare metal flavors, which are dedicated to our bare metal cell. So all requests to have an instance created with that flavor will end up in our cell. Uh, we have one compute node. As I mentioned, in the past, we used to have five or seven for scalability reasons. We decided to end up with only one because with one node, we can debug much easier because all happens through that node. So in the past, and I will explain it later, we found some issues when nodes would go down and then they, this would cause some uh, um, inconsistencies on the, on the data. 
as you can see, we have three ironic nodes. It's not very explicit on the image, but that's why I'm here to talk to you about it. So these are three ironic controllers. We have uh, the same configuration in the three of them. We run the ironic inspector to do the introspection when new hardware arrives. We run an, the ironic conductor and the ironic API using uh, Apache. So in the story that happens, we have several malicious users or malicious uh, characters one of them is the power sink. So this is uh, an issue that we saw uh, back in time, I don't know, one year ago, and we didn't realize, or we just were taking it for granted because actually it's a cool feature, right? Like Nova, what it does, it checks in its hypervisors. Uh, it tries to synchronize the state of each instance, so to keep an update, an, an up-to-date state. So this is the same in Ironic because the way Nova works, if you want to deploy an Ironic um, cloud or handle bare metal machines. You just have a compute node or several compute nodes with the ironic driver. So it's doing the same thing, right? It's checking this, thing, this power sync. But what I'm uh, showing in this slide is not actually this, sorry for that. This is uh, in the ironic side, the same happens. So ironic needs to have control of the state of, the, of its nodes. So periodically in a by default 60 seconds uh, frequency, it checks the state via IPMI of every node. So this this will, this will go one by one in all the nodes, checking the state, whether it's on or off, updated its database, that's fine. The reason is uh, when you have many nodes, it starts to get to an issue, but we didn't see that even if we saw the, the increase on the logs. We realized because sometimes the, we were losing the connection on MySQL and we were talking to the DB teams and saying, hey, look, we have this issue, this is a bit weird, and they told them this is definitely on your side, even if it seems like it's on ours. So we ended up digging into the, into the ironic configuration and reading a lot, and actually we found these two uh, settings that we had to change after some testing. So first of all, the first one is pretty self-explanatory. We just increased the, the frequency of, the, of this power sync interval from, from one minute to five minutes, and this actually decreased the load both, I mean, in the ironic conductors, and this stopped also hammering the, the databases. Another setting that we found out that seems to be pretty interesting is this force power state during sync. So if uh, orchestrated by someone else, in this case Nova, if Nova sees that uh, the node should be on or off, this setting will make ironic translate or actually enforced the state on the database. So we ended up with the case, and I think Arne reported it on the last summit, that some users were complaining, hey, look, I'm powering on my node. I just go, went to the data center, powered on my node, and it keeps on going down. This is because for Nova it was down, and Nova was saying, ironic, hey, look, for me this instance is down. And ironic was saying, oh, shit, I'm gonna turn it down. So this was pretty annoying for the user. So by setting this instance, this setting to false, you will make sure that you might have some inconsistencies, but I think it depends on your users or whether you, wanna, whether you want to deal with their anger. Um, another thing we found on the ironic side, it's uh, some hard to explain API memory foot footprint. So our ironic database for around 1500 nodes, it's around 50, 60 megabytes. We noticed that whenever we um, start the APIs, we see they start at a constant uh, amount of memory consumed, the RSS, the resident set size. And whenever some of the processes or threads get, get a, a call, they immediately increase for some reason in an order of magnitude of five or 10. So we were trying to debug that. We never understood what's exactly causing, but what we've seen is that changing the configuration of the amount of uh, processes and threads that we have, we can reduce the total of, uh, of the memory consumed by the whole Ironic API to actually like around to the half. So this is actually what we are using. We run in each of the three controllers, we run one process with 16 threads of the API. We also have updated to use Apache, uh, which uh, we were expecting to get some improvement, but we didn't see any clear. So this is something that was discussed with upstream. I think we need to raise this up again in case it's important for, or you saw something similar. Um, and as I mentioned yesterday, uh, before, uh, Nova is also doing these regular power things. So back again to this uh, argot when we talk from Nova with Ironic, like in the team, and we say, hey, you have, uh, 
15, or I say, I have 1,500 nodes, and my colleague says, no way, but you have only one compute node, right? And they say, okay, so in the end, we get to the same page, but Nova is also checking because Nova considers Ironic or our cell in our setup a single hypervisor. So Nova, somewhere it says, hey, hypervisor, give me the state of your instances. And then the bare metal driver uh, goes and asks Ironic in the API, uh, hey, Ironic, give me for this, 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 this instance, give me the, the state. So this was hammering our Ironic APIs. So every 10 minutes, we would get uh, 1,000 calls, and this would cause some load in our Ironic controllers. In the end, uh, so we also were confused because they seem like similar issues, but they have nothing to do. So one is the Ironic sync power state, which is triggerly, triggered independently from the Nova side. But this, so we were confused because they seem to be correlated, but they were not in the end. So again, looking in the documentation and uh, reading the docs, we found out that we could reduce this config, this parameter, the sync power state pool size, which is clearly written in the, in the Nova documentation, specifically for the Ironic driver, you may want to turn down this to something like 10, because yeah, if you run uh, only one compute node, as you do for handling all the, all the bare metal nodes, this is maybe not the right approach, but this uh, solved our issues, because this means that Nova is only calling or creating 10 API calls at a time, and only when it gets back all the answers, then uh, it will start uh, creating new, new calls. We also played while debugging this with the sync power state interval. So we tried to uh, reduce the frequency. This didn't change anything, but uh, I just, uh, maybe it's useful for you. Another approach that some uh, operators are doing, so we were talking to the community, is to actually disable the whole power sync process. This might come at a price, but if you are willing to pay that price, which is not having consistent state, uh, consistent states between Ironic and Nova, you might want to uh, give it a go. So we know operators doing it at, at, a, at a massive scale, running without the power sync. So that's our thing. So up to now, uh, our two main characters, Ironic and Nova, have uh, gone through the first challenge. So they have. Uh, they, they beat it, the, the power sync, which was a malicious character that caused us some headaches, but we were finally happy over it. And uh, that's another nice quote from Romeo and Juliet. I, I love this one. So Romeo, again, uh, talking to himself, he would say, did my heart love till now? For swear it's sight, for I never saw true beauty till this night. So it's something like that, right? Our two main characters are realizing, whoa, we do a nice team together. So they, they set out for new adventures. And this was when we needed to upgrade to Queens. So the Queens seemed as a solution to all our problems. But this is how it felt when we tried to upgrade. Uh, Queens seemed like a big thing. But again, our two characters love each other, so they decided to continue the adventure. And uh, so Arne already reported this in the, in the summit. We found many, well, we found curious stuff while, while after upgrading it, because we were not maybe actually ready or we didn't read through the whole docs. Like, I remember we had to upgrade Ironic uh, by emergency because even if it's clearly written in the Ironic docs, please upgrade Ironic before Nova. So we happened to upgrade Nova before and then Ironic crashed. But okay, that was our fault. Also a good uh, tip that I would like to give you today, read the docs before you upgrade or... <laughs> so that's... <laughs> so, things we saw uh, with uh, Queens were... Uh, where, where to do with the resource classes. So we discovered that a user forgot to change the, the project he was working on, and he decided to create a virtual machine, which our flavor that we call medium. So medium is something like two cores. And uh, because he was working on a project that was mapped to our bare metal cell, he just SSH to the machine checked the amount of RAM, and he got 132 or 126. He was like, "Woo, that's a nice uh, outcome for my VMs. I like this flavor. So then, after careful investigation, we realized that um, uh, back then, the way uh, resource classes were consumed, so Ironic, uh, the way it schedules, or the way Nova schedules Ironic instances, is using the custom resource classes. So if we had a node with a custom resource class, it would consume, so if we use the bare metal flavor, it would consume this resource class, but it would not consume the virtual traditional resource 
um, classes, which are uh, megabyte CPU and, and, v and cores. So in this case, because our node was reporting this uh, classic resource classes, so of course our node fulfilled uh, for Nova, considering this node as a hypervisor, this node had indeed two cores at least, and uh, this amount of RAM and, uh, and, and, mem and, and disk space. So he said, okay, go, go for it, you, you're happy. So host this instance, so this ended up like this. It was, uh, we, we, I think we reported it, or we saw there was already a fix ongoing, so we applied it and this worked. But it, it was fun to see that this happened and how, because our users are friendly with us, our, the user reported it to us, but uh, it's a funny thing that you might run into, so just be aware of it. Uh, another interesting thing, so it's the same error, but uh, it got like somehow a virtual overcommit because we scheduled a, a, a bare metal instance, so with a bare metal flavor, we got consumed the custom bare metal resource class, but then a user came along, committed, or actually we did it by doing some testing, and it was the virtual flavor that consumed the, class, the, the classical resource classes, so we ended up, as reported in this log, that this node had actually uh, more than, or because of the way the resource classes were consumed, we ended up with this funny uh, outcome. There are some tools, I just uh, put here one, one that I like, because this allows us to check whether this resource class has the appropriate candidates that you would expect from when trying to instantiate an instance. There are, there are more ways to, to check that. Another weird instance that also due to our, how to our, how our, the history of our deployment and how our infrastructure is set up is that we ended up at some point in time scheduling instances to nodes in maintenance. So this was due to some uh, problem in how we use the placement, uh, nested resource provider, so we were caching some things that we shouldn't, or, and then we ended up sometimes scheduling nodes to, scheduling instance to nodes in maintenance, which caused our rally dashboard uh, to look green and red, and uh, this, we didn't like it. It's just a funny story, because as soon, the, as, soon as the request gets to Ironic, Ironic complains quickly, but uh, it made it all the way, so I don't know, interesting. Okay, one, one thing that we saw due to the L1TF reboot campaign, we saw, so we have availability zones and when we run campaigns like this, we ensure we go one by one, not to uh, make our users have, if they, if they properly define their services to run in different availability zones, they should always have a node app. So this, uh, this graph you see is when, the, when our database that it's hosted in our own infrastructure was down due to the reboot campaign. Uh, you see all these reds there. And uh, with this, we realized that um, if the Ironic DB is down, or if Ironic is not reporting properly, or if you have a single Nova compute like we have, and it's also on fire, this might cause issues, because then the way all the resource providers are reported, that's not stable, and then they get compromised, then we might get some issues recreating them. That's something else that we also saw that it was already fixed in Rocky, and uh, so now we are happily running all the services, both in, in Rocky, Nova, and uh, Ironic, even though we needed to roll back, as Belmiro said yesterday in his talk, the compute node in the bare metal cell to Queens because we had some scaling issues, but uh, another thing we, that made us, that made our two characters love each other is our rally testing. So we have a rally enabled for lots of different tests within our infrastructure. So we run uh, cluster creation, VM creation, of course, volume attachment, uh, image creation. We run this every hour for the whole infrastructure and because we have cells, we quickly spot if uh, a single uh, cell database is down or if we have some issues with any of the services because the, error rep the errors replicate across all projects. And since we run Rally for Ironic, we are so happy because we see at a glance whether it's running or not. Currently, QA is failing. That was just... Uh, to show you that it actually reports red, but that was tricked on purpose. Uh, so, uh, yeah. This is a quote by the friar when he agrees to marry Romeo and Juliet. 
So as we've seen, if our characters love each other, they should marry. And he tells both lovers, these violent delights have violent ends, and in their triumph die, like fire and powder, which as they kiss consume. Therefore, love moderately. So <laughs> that's just to remind us that, uh, I don't know, I love this quote. So our new, our two characters, they are so happy, so they now set out to Rocky. And you now see there that they have the support of the queens, so they are not alone anymore. So we upgraded to Rocky, as I already mentioned before. We saw small issues, nothing serious, but for example, on the ironic side, when we were trying to do the DB sync, we discovered that because of the objects uh, versions in the database, we had some issues. So running with the new controllers in Rocky, this ironic DB sync uh, upgrade, we were seeing that the database is not ready, and it was the client was kindly suggesting us to run online data migration in the previous release. We did that, and even if the, apparently there was no error and the command succeeded, we couldn't still rerun the upgrade because it kept on failing. We ended up discovering that in the database we had for the ports different versions. Upgrading those manually solved the issue. I think the day afterwards we just saw that this was fixed in a patch for the next uh, review. So it's a critic as well for me, like maybe get a bit more involved or in the, how the conversations are going within Ironic because most of the issues were already there and we sometimes miss them because we are focused on our day-to-day -day operations. But uh, you might run, I don't think you will run into this because this is now backported. So what are the new plans for the CERN cloud? Um, our data center, we have around 10,000 hypervisors or nodes in total. We have now 1,500 enrolled in Ironic. One of our goals for the next couple of months is adopting, as Ironic calls, the way to bring existing uh, hardware within the reach of Ironic. So in case we want to repurpose that hardware, we can actually do it from Ironic because we've proven ourselves that it's pretty convenient. So we just need to uh, adopt all this hardware so that the next time they need to be either recreated or reprovisioned for another user, then we can do it within Ironic and within the OpenStack context. Uh, another feature we've been working up uh, at, and we have a proposal now upstream and it's been debated, is the support for software RAID. So our hypervisors run with a RAID 1 configuration, or depending on the disks, we also have some other configuration. This would be super nice because this would allow to use Ironic and abstract all of the configuration that we do uh, after the installation. So this is, the document is there. I will share the slides later in case you want to check it. Probably if you are around, you've seen that we've raised this in the last previous Ironic meetings. And this is cool because if we can have software RAID, then uh, there wouldn't be any blocker for using Ironic for the whole data center. What else? Uh, Another thing we would like to do uh, is to migrate our, the way we handle the hardware. So one pain that we have is keeping track of the exact delivery or the exact hardware for whom is it going, who has it now, if there is some lease between users because they don't need the full, I don't know, 40 machines that they got and they temporarily uh, lease it to another user. This is the way we use it and having an Excel with colors, I think it's a, it's a proof that it's not uh, the proper tooling for, for handling this. So actually yesterday there was a super interesting forum about uh, hardware inventory. So there is this proposal, I don't think it's accepted yet, but there is work being down there. It's actually, it actually has a name as well, Sardonic. So this is something like a hardware inventory, not a fully fledged uh, CMDB, but this would allow us to, to have many of our issues because it would nicely integrate with Ironic, which is the main goal of this proposal, be it accepted or not. This would uh, help us a lot with our managing, with our management of the, of the bare metal cloud. What else? One thing that we very much look into it for the future is uh, console support. So this is what we currently offer our users. This is far from ideal. We suffer it ourselves whenever we need to log into our uh, machines to check whether there is some networking issue or something happened during inspection or cleaning, we get the credentials and we go to the, to the BMC interface, download the console and open it. That's far from ideal. So another thing we are looking is into Redfish because if Redfish provides, depending on the vendor, all these, cap all these uh, use cases, that would be nice to use it. 
And uh, that's it for today. Uh, as you can see, this is a love story. So in our team, Nova and Ironic work together and love each other. So now feel free to ask any questions. And thanks for coming along. We don't at the moment because we have a flat network, but that's something we are looking on, migrating to SDN. <coughs> Thank you, Dan. If you have any question, just feel free to ping me. I'm here. Thanks for coming, guys. Mm.